What's your name? Green! I got 100 on my dash, got 200 in my trunk. They ain't in the grab bags for my trunk. Like a cracker on the top of my butt, like a dumb trunk. It's your trunk. day good day everybody and once again we are back together so we are going to be looking at question number five from our eastern cape november 2023 exam so we've covered already 20 uh, question number one two three and four so please if you haven't subscribed make sure that you're part of the family so as you prepare towards your grade 11 final exams let's look at this question Right, so they say to us, we've got the diagram below that shows the graph of f of x, which is a over x plus p plus q, right? The asymptotes of f intersect at negative 3 and negative 1, right? And f cuts the x-axis at x is equal to negative 5, right? Now, definitely this is a hyperbola, right? And we can already say that the a value should be negative right and how do i know this because if my a value is greater than zero oops what an ugly a ugly looking a so if a is greater than zero our hyperbola is going to be looking like this but if our a value is less than zero then we know it's going to be over like this so definitely it's this one so it tells us a is less than zero Right, now let's go to the next question. Um, so they say to us, write down the values of P and Q. Now, please, ladies and gents, remember that P represents what we call the vertical asymptote. X is equal to. Now, in this case, I can already see that my vertical asymptote is over here. And it is the line right x is equal to negative 3 now remember when i place it in the in the equation though it needs to change sign so my p value is equal to 3 positive 3 right okay and then what about my q value q represents the horizontal asymptote which is over here and it is the line y is equal to negative 1. Okay, so in that case, it means that q is equal to... Now, for the q value, it takes on the sign. So in this case, it will be negative 1. So remember, the p changes sign, but the q retains its sign. Right, now they say to us, uh, determine the value uh, of a. So we know that the equation now is y is equal to a over x plus 3 minus 1. Now, how do I find the a value? So we're going to substitute one point that we know of that the line passes through, and it is that x-intercept, right? So in this case, where x is negative 5 and y is 0, so I'm going to say when y is 0, a over negative 5 plus 3, that's minus 1. So we are going to solve for A in that case. So take the 1 to the other side. So that's 1 is equal to A divided by negative 2. And as we rightfully said, our value for A, if we cross multiply, A is equal to negative 2. So we already had... Um, determined that our a is going to be negative so a gives us negative 2. Now they say to us hence or otherwise calculate the y-intercept. So now that we know the x-intercept or now that we know the equation for a we know that y is equal to negative 2 over x plus 3 minus 1. Now what happens at the y-intercept? This is where x is equal to 0. So y will be negative 2 divided by 0 plus 3 minus 2. And so what we get there is going to be negative 2 over 3. Right? 
So this is going to be negative 2 over 3 minus 1. Okay. So negative 2 over 3 minus 1. And 1 we can represent it as minus 3 over 3. Okay. So that will give us minus 5 over 3. So meaning that the y-intercept is y is equal to negative 5 over 3. Okay. Or in this case, we can say that the co in coordinate form, rather, it's minus, it's 0 when x is equal to 0 and minus 5 over 3. But in this case, they didn't say we should write it in coordinate form. So our y-intercept is y is minus 5 over 3. Right. And then they say to us, write down the domain of f. Now, remember... The domain is where this graph exists in the, uh, you know, in the x direction. So it starts from negative infinity, right? But what stops it in x? It is the line x is equal to negative 3, right? So we can say that the domain is x is an element of negative infinity, Till negative 3 and from negative 3 again all the way till infinity okay right or you can say that x is an element of real numbers however x cannot be equal to negative 3 right that's another way of expressing that right now they say to us determine the line of symmetry of f with a negative gradient in the form y is equals to mx plus c. Now remember, whenever we've got a hyperbola, so we know that we've got two axes of symmetry, right? And what's common about these axes of symmetry is that, firstly, they pass through the intersection of our asymptotes, okay? So that's the one with the positive gradient. It would pass there. And, of course, we've got another one, with a negative gradient, it also passes the same point. Now, the gradients of these axes of symmetry would be the positive one has m equal to 1, and the negative one has got m is equal to negative 1. So we already know, okay, I'm going to write it over there. Okay, the examiner said, we're looking for the one with a negative gradient, which means the green one, right? So we said M, or rather, let's say Y is equal to negative X plus C, but we know it passes the point negative 3 and 1, okay? So which means when X is negative 3 minus a negative 3, Y is equal to negative 1. And so our C value is minus 1 plus, or rather, let's say minus 1. When we take the 3, this would be minus 1 is positive 3 plus C. So when we take it to the other side, it becomes negative 4. So C is negative 4. So the equation, okay, so the equation of our asymptote uh, rather of our x of symmetry, x is of symmetry, is y is minus x. We said that's minus 4. Right. Ladies and gents, that's how we answer that question. So they say for 5.6, the values of x where f of x is greater or equal to zero. So we are asking ourselves, where is this graph positive, greater or equal to zero? Where is it above the x-axis? Well, it's over there. And there's no other point where it becomes positive. So it means it is between x is negative 5 all the way up until our asymptote where x is negative 3. So we can say to answer that x is an element of negative 5. And please note, 
negative 5 is included until negative 3, which is excluded. Alternatively, you can say in inequality form, x must be greater or equal to negative 5, and it must be less than negative 3. And in that case, that's how we always get uh, the x value in that regard. All right, now... Uh, remember, we included negative 5 because they said greater or equal to. So in that case, we are also including the zeros in that case. Right, and then finally, they say to us, describe the transformation of f to g if g of x is 2 over x minus 1 plus 1. Right, now firstly, I want you to note that it has now become positive, right? Our A value has become positive, all right? So, to get G of X in this case, we've got, um, so firstly, we took, and I want you to note in this case that to make this positive, so to make G of X, what happened? So we made a uh, f of x negative, right? So let's take the equation for f of x. This is going to be minus 2 uh, over x plus 3. x plus 3. And we also had minus 1. All right. So when we multiply it, I want us to note first of all, so uh, that's not g of x fully. So I'm multiplying by a negative, so I get 2 over x plus 3, right? And this is plus 1. Now you can see already we've got this, okay? And we've got that. The only thing now is that how do I make positive 3 to become negative 1? So in that case, what would I need to add to positive 3 to make it negative 1? Well, I'll need to make this minus 4. So what did I, what did I do? Firstly, I reflected the graph of G, of F rather, okay, around the x-axis. Right? So that's why we multiplied by negative or we changed the sign. Okay. And then I shifted it by four units. And now note, if I say minus four, it means that I am shifting it to the right. Okay. So they say describe the transformation. So firstly... It was a reflection around the x axis. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, we did say yes. We multiplied the y by negative, so it's the it's a reflection in the x axis. Okay, and then we shifted. To the right by four units. Right, so that's what we did. We made the graph positive and we shifted it four units to the right, and that's how we got the, that transformation. And ladies and gents, that's how we get to that question. Uh, question number five, very interesting. And out of 17 marks, very, very interesting questions there. And now we're going to go on to question number six, which also uh, comprises of uh, uh, functions. It is the biggest section in paper number one. So please make sure that you master that. So for now, I'll see you guys in the next video. Shop shop.